Hey, my name is Stephen Bowles, and welcome to our exciting webinar where we're going to be introducing Showflow Studio, something we're really, really uh, just thrilled to be bringing to the marketplace and to talking about in more detail today. So um, again, if you haven't already, so if you're watching this on our live page on our Showflow site, um, make sure you sign in and put your name in there so that we can actually uh, get your feedback, get your comments, get your Q&A as you go. Throughout this whole studio demonstration, send in your questions. Uh, JP Chat on our end is actually going to be uh, receiving those questions, queuing them up, and we're going to have a very uh, dedicated block of Q&A at the end. But um, before we get going, just want to say again, um, it's a weird year 2020 is, and we've all been trying to sort of figure out uh, how do we roll forward with all of this. Um, Showflow was no different than, than the rest of you guys in, in the marketplace. Um, it went to a screeching halt there for a little bit, and it was scary. Um, and so I think the way that you respond and the way that uh, we respond as an industry uh, during this time is important. Um, and so, to be honest, uh, we, didn't, we just don't know how to sit on our hands. And so we said, let's start working the problem and um, you know, sort of working on, on the new problem, which uh, we're here to talk about today, which is just how do you produce a show better than Zoom? So let me pull this up for us real quick and uh, we'll get going. So um, high level, why is Showflow even talking to you right now? We're, we're rundown software, right? Like where, where is this studio stuff from? Um, well, like we said, our mission and vision actually internally has always been to build tools to help you produce shows easier. That's it. Um, so conveniently and uh, really for us uh, and just we're thrilled to, we said let's take that seriously and let's build something for reels that helps uh, producers and teams that produce uh, live events uh, function in this current climate. And to be honest, what I think is going to be an ongoing climate for a while at minimum with, with really this kind of... Uh, hybrid event kind of approach moving forward. So we started with this really simple question. How do I produce a better show than Zoom? Like literally the world got thrusted into uh, having, uh, we had to lose our opportunity to have access to Video Village backstage or, or in the theater room, or if you have a, a, you know, a broadcast control truck, anything like that, we just lost access to it. And then all of a sudden we, we were handed things like Zoom and Blue Jeans and and WebEx and even, heck, even Google Hangouts, unfortunately. Uh, and we were said, make something amazing with this. And so uh, I've actually been super impressed with what people are able to do. Um, but at the end of the day, that's, that's not really what those tools are designed for. Um, when you think about producing a show better than Zoom, one of the first places you start is obviously lights, camera, audio, right? So, uh, you know, and I think it's been really cool to see how the industry has responded, developed these kind of like virtual kits that you can send out to remote presenters that have the ring lights and all that kind of stuff. Um, because at the end of the day, you can have a really, really epic master control room, but if you're coming in via webcam and uh, you're looking like the FBI files in the background, you know, silhouette style, um, then, you know, poop in, poop out. And uh, so anyways, uh, this has been really an exciting spot that we've seen a lot of people doing work on and it's really, really cool. So lights, camera, audio, trying to sort of navigate that whole space. Another one though, that's very, very near and dear to our hearts and we're hearing a lot from the marketplaces, just access to controls. Um, again, you might, you might be able to have that one virtual event that wants to go big, maybe again, it's like the NBA or, or you know one of these larger award shows that really can go big and have that big control room type experience. But a lot of boring virtual events, uh, internal town halls, summits, all these kinds of things, they're all trying to figure out where and how they exist online. And so they can't afford the big million dollar solutions. Um, Obviously, there's a lot of uh, you know activity. Everybody just jumped over to vMix, um, or they jumped into new tech, or things like that. Some of those more software uh, grade solutions, um, because they kind of speak the language that we're familiar with, but they don't necessarily, uh, you know, uh, they haven't really crossed that delta in terms of making it easy and intuitive um, for presenters and things like that. And then of course you got the classics, which is WebEx, Zoom, you know, GoToMeeting, all that stuff. And so uh, while that is easy to get going and for you know buy-in from your remote presenters, it's terribly like constraining in terms of um, what opportunities and access to controls you have in there. The good old classic, if you have the CEO, CEO up on the stage or on the screen that is in Spotlight in Zoom, and some intern has his mic open and the dog barks, 
all of a sudden Zoom's just cutting over, you know, and, and looking at, you know, looking at some kid's face. So obviously like having access to control is what you want to have and that's the most important part and it's how you produce a better show than Zoom. So um, that's where we started. That's what we set out on back in essentially April. Um, and we started work on it uh, really at the turn into May and we've been just going just bonkers trying to build this thing out. And so we're really excited today to debut um, Showflow Studio. And so again, don't worry, this is gonna be a big software demo. We're just doing an initial little show and tell here. Um, so what is Showflow Studio? So Showflow Studio is a very easy to use streaming tool. It's really designed to deliver that broadcast grade uh, production without the required experience. And again, I don't mean like, um, engineering experience, but actually I kind of do. Uh, the tools and the, the way we built it is designed to be something that is very easy to get up and going and get to an amazing look quick without any, uh, without having to do all this preloading and installing and having to uh, set up a video village or build out a master control room or do anything like that. You just open a browser and you have all these tools right there to go. At the same time, we really thought about this in terms of uh, the two different major parties that are involved when you're doing a virtual event. Um, you have the director and the producing team, right? And you guys, we're very interested in like access to muting microphones. We're interested in uploading video and full frame rates and all of those types of things that matter and that you don't have access to with these other tools. At the same time, the presenters though, they need like simplicity. They're going out of Zoom calls or Blue Jean calls or, or WebEx calls all day long. And so if they're gonna bump into some sort of rehearsal or production uh, or even a live stream or whatever, they really don't need to have some very complex setup that they have to install locally or do anything like that. And so we really thought about it that way. Um, but then in addition to that, what we really thought about with the presenter view is how do we get some of those tools that us as producing teams are used to, right? Uh, we're familiar and used to being able to have downstage monitors right there at the bottom of the stage and being able to put prompter in there or graphics in there or whatever. Um, and we lost all that immediately when we, when we got thrusted into this. Um, and so that's really kind of how we approach those, those two views. The third view ultimately being the attendees, and we'll talk about more of that later. Um, so real quick on the director view, and then of course we'll just jump right in. Cool things, top level features to know about our director view, up to 10 live cameras on program at a time, but that's not your limit in terms of guest sources or presenter sources, actually can get up to 100, which is very, very intentional and our architecture there is so that you don't have to do the whole zoom hopping game with green rooms. We also do very easy multi-camera lay layouts. My background's directing cameras for live events. Uh, so this was a very fun project for me. And uh, so just the ability to, I used to get paid a lot of money to come in and create a four box. Um, and then all of a sudden, uh, it can still be sort of complicated to pull that stuff off in, in some of these uh, video switchers out there. Yet I can go into Zoom and get a four box without even trying. Um, that's just doesn't make sense. And so for us, we really approached this into being able to create am amazing layouts with little to no ease at all, essentially. Uh, full frame rate video playback. We understand that this is what a producer needs. You need to be able to have access to and play back the content that you're spending money on creating so intentional on the pre-production side. It needs to look the way you designed it. And unfortunately, if you're doing a screen share with computer playback, even in a Zoom, you can't guarantee those types of playbacks. Local and remote screen share, overlays, backgrounds, lower third generators, and then of course, custom RTMP streaming. We'll get through all that in just a little bit. On the presenter view, that's really again designed for the presenter to be able to see and participate in the show in the sort of traditional way that they might um, through a WebEx type experience, but also some of those producer level uh, options uh, present in there as well. Things like the program monitor on the right that's separate from the multi view, things like the agenda uh, where you can, they can kind of see, hey, where we are, we're currently in an interview, we're going to a panel next presenter screen share for them if they needed to, remote teleprompter, it's a big challenge space right now, I think we've got a great answer for it. Speaker timer clock, the ta live tally, uh, and then of course just a producer chat along the way. So um, enough talking about it, a lot of text, a lot of really cool stuff. Why don't we actually demo it and take a look at what it looks like? So what I'm gonna do is actually just reveal Showflow Studio. We've actually been in the studio this entire time, uh, just kind of zoomed in uh, through some you know crazy little web hacks, um, zoomed into the program space, but you can actually see right here the whole time we've been in studio. And actually this screen that we were just on um, with the screen share, that is a screen share coming from a remote presentation deck, right? Not, not a local one right here, but coming from a remote presentation deck. So what I'll do is I'll come down here and I'll just solo Steven, and here we are. 
So of course, you don't naturally or probably as a producing team aren't the host yourself. Um, today I am. So my camera is actually a local camera that you can do. You can bring in local cameras. Um, but I think in your mind, imagine this more as you're the dire uh, director and you don't see yourself in here, but you see all of your remote presenters in here. So a couple things. Let's, uh, let's kind of take a, a walk around the park real quick. So you can see this is myself and I've got some overlays going on up here. So if I go into the upper right corner, you'll see we have the layers tab. And so in the layers tab, we can simply just toggle on and off and that's bringing on and off that live logo, right? Bring it right back on and there you go. Same thing, these are Showflow Studio logos. I can just click this, take it off, take it on. We actually support four different regions, upper left, right, uh, lower right, uh, lower left. And then we also support full screen. Um, so you can actually click right here and I just have a kind of a fun little confetti one, but a really good example of using the full screen layout. We, really wonderful if you're, if you're building uh, tiles or different arrangements and you wanna really kind of create some lower thirds or something that really kind of decorates your entire screen right there. So that was just a little bit about overlays. You can also do what we call, um, uh, use our different layouts. So if I was to go up here, for, for example, and go to specifically the grid layout, that's gonna put me on the screen, but it's also gonna reveal the background layer as well. So you can kind of see down here, I've got the orange background layer. Uh, these are all just JPEGs, PNGs, really, really easy. Just choose local, bring it on up. So I can select a different one right now. And of course we'll have transitions and some really cool stuff with those as well. But just really nice way to kind of create some different looks right here. So cool. Well, um, let me actually, this is, it's always more interesting. Uh, it's unlikely that you're producing live events where you just have one person talking the entire time. So let's demonstrate this a little bit more. So I'm gonna first uh, kind of draw your attention down here to the presenters area. And you can see that there are a couple of different live sources that have been down here the whole time. Imagine this again being a show where the first segment was the host having dialogue and sharing different things. And the whole time, I did not have to worry about myself or, or any of these additional presenters accidentally getting brought up onto the screen. And that's by design. That's because they're currently toggled off. So all of your auto layouts never include sources that are currently toggled off. So I'm gonna bring Sharif Oliver on, simply gonna toggle him off or toggle him on, which brings his microphone on. And then as simply as this, I just hit add live. Hey Sharif, how's it going, man? Doing well. Yeah. How are you, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, you know, getting going. It's uh, it's our yeah. first ever like real large scale uh, virtual event using Studio, and so uh, I'm both like excited and nervous. But that's just honest. This is the behind the scenes view here. But anyways, yeah. um, so where are you, Sharif? You're in the world. You're what? Just down the street from me, I think, uh -huh. right? I am where Showflow headquarters is located, beautiful Orlando, Florida. That's right. But you are not in Showflow headquarters. I am. You're, I think, in your home or something yes, like that. Yes, you know, work from home life. Yes. Try yes. my best, yeah. Well, cool. So uh, Sharif was really easy to be brought on. I can solo Sharif here. I think I see a crib in the background, Sharif. Love it. Uh, I can solo myself. I can go into some of our layouts up here where I can go more of the split screen kind of layout if I wanted to. Um, by selecting that, that's gonna bring the two of us up in this view. Or if I go to the grid layout, again, that's about opening up a little bit more space here. So um, Sharif, real quick, uh, what do you think about my orange background layer here? You know, it's good, I feel warm, but you know, maybe let's try a little blue or something like that. I don't got the blue, Sharif, I got a neon two. There you go. Okay, all right, I don't like it. I'm gonna go with my producer credentials and actually just say no to that one. We're going back to blood. Okay, cool. All right, so Sharif, uh, I'm gonna rotate you off. Again, imagine that what we're doing is we're moving in between two different segments, right? So I might solo myself, have some dialogue. At this point in the background, the director is toggling off of Sharif and they're bringing on the next presenter. So John Alexander has been turned on, but he's not been brought up live yet. It's very simple to bring John Alexander up. All you do is click add live and there's John. Hey John, how's it going, man? What's up, Stevie? How's the office? <laughs> the office is blue. Uh, I kind of miss it. I, I, I do love working from home, but I miss like feeling like the office has its own energy about it, you know? And uh, so I, I kind of miss that a yeah. little bit. I miss the snacks. You miss the peanut butter pretzels. I don't believe that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, hey, so John, uh, John's on, very easy here. Good demonstration of John coming in and out here. Uh, what I'll do is we can also uh, add lower thirds to John really easily. So I'm gonna just solo John Alexander right now. And let's say that what we wanted to actually do, I didn't have one already, 
So let's create a new one for John. So John, let's do it together. So this is uh, our lower third generator, and I can kind of select any one of the three templates we've got now. We're going to have like 40 really awesome templates with transitions and even video effects, things like that. We're really excited about this. But John, while I'm building out your banner, um, what is your favorite movie, actually? I'll, let's put that in there. Ooh, well, I'm a big Chris Nolan fan, so okay. probably got to say Inception is uh, one of my all-time favorites, Dude, if not my favorite. Definitely one of mine. Uh, did you see Tenet yet? I have not seen Tenet yet. I'm, uh, I kind of prefer watching movies from my couch on my big screen at home, so probably try to wait till that thing you know comes out to stream oh, or man. Apple TV or something like that cheapo gotta go good they gotta go IMAX all right what's your favorite uh, color John uh, let's go green okay green all right so I quickly kind of built a, a, a lower third here for John hit submit and we can see it's right there and as simple as just hitting uh, the on off here we can see we just brought up John Alexander product specialist with Showflow. somebody probably needs to check the spelling on that I cannot guarantee it but uh, so anyways, the lower third generator is pretty great. We can actually uh, use our templates that we've got or you can upload your own custom graphic um, and using just kind of our regions that we will uh, have as a template you can download ahead of time. Um, and then from there, uh, you just upload your PNG or your JPEG. You can still use our text generator uh, to, to generate the fields or you could just composite that all together ahead of time. But the lower third is really a great way to kind of bring in that. Um, real quick, before I bring in uh, our next guest presenter, uh, reminder, if anyone's got Q&A or questions, please be submitting those. We have dedicated block of time here in just a few minutes where we will walk through those more specifically. Cool. John, I'm going to take you off temporarily, and I'm really excited to bring up the next guest who is legitimately near and dear to my, my heart and my life, actually, all across the board. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Miss Carly Bowles, my wife. Hi, Carly. Hi, Stephen. <laughs> I know it's weird. It's weird calling you Carly. Um, so, for anyone that know it, we have our uh, we had our first uh, child. Her name's Claire Bowles, and she's amazing. Uh, where's Claire, by the way, right now? She actually just got up from a nap. My mom got her, so okay. she's ready to start. You know, moving and shaking for the third section of the day. There you go. She actually just recently started crawling, so I don't know about moving and shaking, but she just started crawling yesterday, which is a cool thing. Well, she does shake her hips. So. And she does shake. She does yeah. dance. Cool. So Carly's on, and what I'll do is I'm just going to start to bring other people on. So I'll go ahead and mute you, Carly, and uh, just kind of show what it looks like to bring additional people on. So let's bring John on. There we go. Three box. Sharif on. Four box. Here we go. Just kind of directing inside of it really clean. And, uh, and, and just really easy to direct and make your moves inside of Showflow as you're going. So um, pretty cool stuff. Um, a couple other notes that I want to talk about is the media playback sides of things. Everything we're looking at right now is more about live presenters. Um, you can as well bring in uh, graphics as well. Um, so again, uh, you kind of saw me doing that on the front end, but it's really as simple as just clicking um, add live right here and that will bring up your uh, graphics uh, source so in terms of graphic sources I'll go back to a slide that's got a little bit more cool stuff there we go uh, in terms of graphic sources they can come in as remote cameras uh, so, uh, as in uh, from a remote presenter or you can actually do a local uh, screen share um, so I, it's going to be based on your, your situation I think a local screen share is not ideal um, if you're the director because you're also you know kind of doing other things um, Ideally, the way we're doing it right now is we actually had a presenter or we had another computer join They gave themselves the name graphics one when they joined into Showflow studio as a presenter And then they just kept their camera off um, and now we're seeing their screen share It's a really clean way to do it if you have like a dedicated graphics operator Of course, we do also let remote presenters themselves share their screen as well And so I'm going to demonstrate a little, little bit of that right now. So uh, you, everything we've been looking at so far has really been within the context of a live um, uh, experience for the director and again I'm actually myself a presenter in this so it gets a little uh, you know unique in terms of that demonstration but what I'd like to do is kind of show you what it might look like if you were to be the presenter and you were to be coming through this so right now um, in terms of adding another source you can either hit copy guest invite link or I can just hit copy invite link here. I'm gonna go to grid view just so we kind of have a nice look there. 
And so all you have to do is simply just paste that into a URL. And this is their view. So remote presenters, it's important to note, there's no software to download. This will be able to get past VPNs. It'll be able to get past firewalls, all that kind of stuff. Um, you're not really asking a lot in terms of the uh, overhead for those remote presenters. So let's kind of come up with just a generic one. Let's say it's just uh, Jeff Jefferson here. As soon as Jeff Jefferson clicks Request Access, we can see over here the director got that request. It happened in real time. And there's a little notification if you didn't hear that. And you can, of course, turn that on and off if you didn't want that. Um, and so all I have to do is this gives you an opportunity to approve or reject. Um, if I hit Approve, of course, that's going to kick off a sequence of things over here where you can actually set the camera. So again, uh, because I'm trying to do this locally so that you guys can kind of experience it with what I'm outputting overall to Vimeo, um, we're just going to have to roll with the flow here, but you can kind of see this is our high wide shot right here. And I'm just going to hit save and that's how this person's actually going to come into the session. And I'll pull it a little wider here so you can kind of see it. Um, and I'll make sure it's muted so you don't get double sound. Great. So this is the presenter view. And again, we're still uh, bringing in some of the different widgets that we've been demonstrating online uh, as well too in terms of those prompt reviews and things like that. But you can see in the presenter view, they see program on the right, and then they see the multi view over here on the left. And so there's Jeff Jefferson, here's Steven, Carly, John, Sharif, there's the control room, here's the screen share. And so if I was to be a director and I simply wanted to solo Carly, for example, here, we can see that Carly is soloed. So Carly, in her view, would be seeing herself here as well, and we would have different tallies telling her that she's live. If I was to go feature a specific flow diagram or some sort of image asset specifically, we can see that that's being passed through right here as well too. So presenter view is really, really exciting. It's something that we're going to be iterating on and, and bringing additional widgets to. The big ones to call out on the front end here is that you can actually pad this presenter view with over 100 presenters. So you don't have to put people in different Zoom rooms ahead of time. You can bring your entire day's worth of presenters, or at least that one session's worth of presenters. They can all join in here, and they all get to watch along live. You as a director, which you can see me demonstrating right here, I can actually remotely um, mute and unmute. So you can see if I just click mute, mute. right there, I can actually remote mute. Same thing goes with the webcam. And so that's by design. It's so that you can control when these people are actually brought into the live program. Otherwise, imagine them just sitting in the uh, video village or green room backstage um, watching the show live. So pretty cool stuff and really helpful. And of course, we're going to have those additional widgets down here coming soon in the next few weeks that are really uh, more about the chat and the rundown and things like that. Cool. So I'm going to uh, head out of here for a second and come back over here and show you guys a couple more things in the rundown. Uh, and then we're going to go to Q&A. So reminder for everybody, if you have any questions, go ahead and start sending them in, and we'll be answering those questions live. OK, great. So I'm going to basically go solo live right now, and I'm going to bring up everybody uh, here. And the next, last thing I want to kind of bring a note up on is the uh, video and media playback. So down here, you kind of saw me under my media section. Um, I, I, I demoed us doing like a feature graphic here on the right. You can also do that for video as well. So I have a video loop right here with no audio, or let's see, no audio here. Um, and it's really just as simple as clicking Add Live, and boom, all of a sudden we're actually going to be playing that live right there. And so that's just kind of going to be looping. You can define that to loop or not mute loop. And then what's great is you can go out of this kind of layout where you might have us, um, or sorry, just have the video full screen, or you might click up here to the featured media right, which would bring us back up as we all watch and have dialogue. So it's really great if you have like B-roll or anything like that. Um, you can have sort of that, that discussion and uh, around the video you've got. And again, we support up to 10 live cameras in here. We've actually got a theater type experience where um, it actually creates a curtain of, of five on the left and a curtain of five on the, on the left and right. And so you can actually just sit there and watch the video and, and have dialogue together, which is kind of cool. Um, so video playback, high full frame rate video playback across the board is a big key to what we're doing. Last bit I want to mention, and then we'll go into Q&A, is um, really just how do you get this out of studio, right? Everything we're looking at, we like it. It's pretty cool. It gives you a lot of uh, controls. How do you get this out of studio? So with Showflow, uh, I'm going to co pull up our, our little diagram here. So you can kind of see in our flow chart, um, you're bringing, just so everyone has like a 30,000 foot view perspective. So if you were to be producing a show inside of, for example, Microsoft Teams um, 
events or something like that, or just Microsoft Teams, you would be asking, and if you were to use Studio as your flow, you would actually be asking your remote presenters to join links directly into Studio, not into Microsoft Teams. You would then be directing your show inside of Studio, and then Studio, you would set your destination or your endpoints to be where you want to get it. Today, we've set our endpoint to be Vimeo, and we've established a custom RTMP endpoint there with a, with a classic stream URL and a stream key, and we've defined our video parameters, and that's how we're accomplishing what we're doing today. Um, you could also send that to Wowza or AWS, or you could send it to Facebook Live or YouTube. You can send it to all of them at the same time. We allow for multiple streams to different RTMP endpoints, um, all even with different video bit rates. But the point there is, is just as you're thinking about how do you use something like Studio as a tool and produce inside of your event, the way to think about it is Showflow Studio is really where you're bringing your video assets and your graphics and then, and then your presenters. They're joining you into your studio. You're directing a show and then you're ultimately sending the output of Studio to wherever the many are, right? Wherever your attendees actually are. Cool. So let me kind of show you a little bit about endpoints. So over here, you can select endpoint. You can click add endpoint. Very, very simple. You can title it whatever you want. So I'll call this Vimeo 1080p. Um, you can define your stream URL and your stream key. And then down here with the advanced settings for those that are more technical, we will let you come in here, define your uh, resolution, your frame rate, your bit rates, um, buffer size, all of that type of stuff, even manage delay as you go. And then you would be able to create this um, and ultimately, I didn't have those parameters with me right now, so I didn't create it. Ultimately, that would land here where you could simply click go live and that would be going live as you're doing it. So uh, we, I think there's probably going to be some good questions around how do you get studio and our, and our options in terms of custom RPs, but that's an important one to note about right there. Okay, we covered a lot. Um, JP, at this point, I'd love to invite you into helping us manage the uh, Q&A. Real quick, I'll kind of bring this up so everyone can kind of see JP right now. JP is in the house. There's JP. Hey, JP, turn around and say hi. Hey. Okay, cool. So JP right now is on our Vimeo admin page, right? And so Vimeo is currently how we're doing the one-to-many, and we're actually uh, in terms of the stream CDN. And so he's been receiving Q&A. And so JP, when you're ready, let's go ahead and take the first question. Absolutely. Uh, I like this one. Take it. Oh, I'm waiting for it to hit the stream. Unfortunately, I don't have it watching it local. Go ahead and say the stream. What is the question for me? The question is, will we support uh, NDI? NDI. Good question. Love NDI. No reason we won't. Uh, right now, everything you're looking at in terms of cameras are WebRTC. Um, and so that is how we're facilitating the cameras coming inbound. And so you should know that. Um, and then in terms of what we're also looking to make available as sources, would be both NDI and actually SRT and also RTMP as a source. All of those things are very, very important and we're very interested in that. Again, that's the difference between what we're building and I think the other tools that maybe some people have had to kind of shoehorn themselves into out there that are a little bit more consumer facing that are about helping you grow your Instagram fire following or something like that. Uh, I'm not gonna name any of those softwares, but essentially I think those tools were initially there for those purposes. And we are very much so interested in um, working on those types of uh, specifics so that you have those capabilities. JP, go ahead. What's the next question? Uh, the next question, or the next most popular question, is in regards to pricing and what the structure will be around <laughs> that. Yeah, so pricing, obviously, we would, uh, we're, we're dialing this in in terms of uh, making sure that this is something that's feasible for everybody. Uh, you know, we're building it, and so we have to make sure it works for us and for everybody out there. In general, though, we're following the active user approach. We're not going to be charging per presenter, or um, so you can have as many presenters as you want in here. Um, it's going to be more in the space of uh, probably that 100 to $150 per active user. An important note to talk about there, the active users are really actually people like myself who can come in here and direct cameras. A big part of what you can do in Showflow is actually collaborate in the control room of Showflow. So I have the permission of a director. Um, Sharif, if he wasn't a presenter uh, and actually was just a wonderful graphics operator, 
he could actually come in here and I could give him just permission to uh, help me build overlays, build lower thirds, and get those things out to the world. Um, and so that's, that's a controlled space, that, but he wouldn't necessarily have the permission to take cameras on and off live. We also have a producer role where they're gonna be able to have dialogue with the presenters in the presenter view or in the green room essentially that we're working on. Um, and that's a really key benefit of the software we're trying to build is again, the ability for you to almost have like an IFB to have that dialogue with the green room without any risk of that coming up into production or up, up and onto live. Cool, next question, JP. That was actually going to be the next question. Uh, can you speak or communicate with people in the, well, that are on deck in the green room? But you kind of I kind of did answer that, yeah. So again, the question he had was, can people speak to people in the green room? So this has been a big challenge for our side of the industry, people who are trying to produce live events. How do you, um, how do I have dialogue? Again, I, I like to say one of my best friends uh, in the production world, uh, Liz Obala, she is awesome. Uh, if anyone's looking for you know, a, a stage manager, a show caller, or any, any of those stuff. She, um, she would be the one on the headset who sits stage left. She would go to the green room and actually pick up the presenter, walk them to stage left or to stage right, wait for the presenter or for the stage manager um, for, to give her the cue, and she would push that person to the stage. And that's what we have known as producing teams for the last whatever, ever. Um, and we lost access to all of that. And so um, that is the problem space very much so that Studio is working to make easier for you. Um, right now, again, like I said before, you can bring 100 presenters in there. We're gonna have the producer chat. Um, we're also going to have the ability for you to have a, a user in Showflow, in Studio, who has the ability to essentially solo kind of think like I'm doing right now, solo. Um, solo Carly here and have a dialogue with Carly and that not be what's heard in program or brought anywhere else. And be able to go, Carly, I really like uh, everything. Uh, maybe we should try a different light blue. I don't think that really works well with the room. So the ability for her to, uh, for someone to be able to have that dialogue with them in presenter view and in the green room view is key and that is functionality that we will be including in Showflow Studio. Next question. Talk a little bit about theater view and someone's ability to embed the clean output yep. into their own space. Yes, yeah, so there's uh, the, the ways that you get Showflow Studio out, right? The, everything, this, this program output right here, how do you get this to the different destinations that are available for you? So we've talked a little bit about that, again, using um, that flow diagram, you can kind of see, hey, we can do custom RTMP streams, that's gonna be your kind of uh, go-to default one right now. Uh, in terms of like getting it to Vimeo or getting it to Wowza or whatever it might be. Other options though are we do have a dedicated program output. Essentially it would just be program by itself and that would be something that you can bring up in another tab. Uh, it will bring in all, it will render all the different um, presenters, their tiles, the video playback at full frame rate, the whole deal. And so you're actually able to put that up um, take it full screen just like I'm doing right now and then take an HDMI out of that MacBook or whatever I'm a Mac guy but anyways of that of that device and bring that into whatever your video system is of choice so if you are trying to still leverage more of a traditional hardware production setup um, that would be a way to take what we've got and bring it into your system that's what we kind of call the uh, upstream and downstream use cases of Showflow Studio the upstream being you still have a vMix setup maybe or some sort of warehouse setup um, where you've got uh, your studio, your, your broadcast level studio uh, set up with hardware and all that stuff and fixed cameras. But maybe you love Showflow Studio and you want to just use it to create some of these looks like the layouts here. You could maybe just do it over black and without all this overlay stuff and something you could really key in into your own uh, production mix that's downstream of us. Very much so a good use case of Showflow just because of that intuition and that ease of use of interacting with the presenters, the prompter, the rundown, all that kind of stuff. Another one would be if we're used downstream of your production mix. So in that case, again, you've got that vMix, that tech stack, um, and maybe you're sending your main output, um, but you necessarily want to just stream specifically um, for a unique, dedicated, separate audience that would be a use case where you can actually um, stream downstream uh, and maybe just add overlays on top. Cool. I think that in general covers the, the kind of stuff. Um, 
JP, what's another question that we've got right now? We're getting an echo for some reason. Okay. Uh, other questions are, can other presenters advance slides from their own remote PCs? Can other presenters, re oh, so in terms of other presenters being able to advance their slides from remote um, presenter PCs, they can if they're doing their own screen share, but they can't if, uh, if, if you're doing the screen share and uh, they're just looking to tell you to advance. That is something we've been getting in feedback and I love it and we're gonna actually be offering that as an option, basically the ability for them to have a little next button in the presenter view where they can send a signal to whoever your graphics operator is and they can actually hit next along the way. Cool, next question JP. Um, are there hardware limitations for your video participants? For example, can will this work on a Chromebook? For the presenter view, no limitations. And actually, I, I test with a Chromebook at my house all the time. I've actually got a nice little table set up with like six different devices. And so presenter view across all of those, whether it's an iPad, actually, an iPhone, all that kind of jazz works just fine. Again, in the it's really just browser-based. It's WebRTC, and we're doing optimization on our end to make sure that um, we're actually limiting the amount of people. Uh, like if, if you put six people up on the screen, we're actually working on making sure that we throttle that back a little bit since you're no longer really demanding a 1080p or 720p individual stream just to put them up there. Um, so we are working on uh, optimization along the way as well too. Next question. The next question is, uh, can we adjust the microphone volume levels for our presenters? It will be, yep, absolutely. Um, we don't have that yet to demo today, but it is one of our uh, feature tickets that's uh, going to be a part of our MVP. Basically, what they what we will have is like a soft mixer. Uh, we're not trying to go overly uh, complex there, but we will have a soft mixer where you can basically any live camera coming in and any audio source that's playing back will have its VU meters jumping, and you'll be able to go in there and goose it up, goose it down if you needed to a little bit. Um, that being said, all of our Chime actually does its own. Uh, sorry, all of our WebRTC feeds and the way that we're doing this actually does um, all the mix minus uh, right there along the way. Uh, the other question is essentially what technology is Showflow Studio built on? They asked, is it built off of StreamYard? Oh my gosh, no, not built off of StreamYard. Um, so yeah, so uh, it's all in-house really. I mean, we obviously software and web development is always leveraging you know code that's out there. Um, but we do all of our programming in-house. This thing existed, had zero lines of code five months ago, and now it's got too many to count. Um, so we, we do use, uh, you know, everything we do internally, both on the rundown side and on the studio side, leverages um, AWS. And so as we're doing things, uh, whether it's streaming or getting that to the many people, uh, when we start talking about how Showflow, you could actually in, uh, use Showflow to actually stream to your mini audience. Um, we, we're using AWS, and that's a standard thing, and that's, that's a lot of how you're consuming some of the broadcast stuff out there. Um, so, uh, and then in terms of that being shared resources with anyone else in Showflow, in terms of like if your event is streaming, is it going to get busted up by some other event, you know, happening, I don't know, across the world? Um, no, uh, if you're not there as well, too. But in terms of the way that we're handling it, we are, it is WebRTC streams that are coming in, um, but that's just where we got started to get going quick. We're gonna be doing SRT, hopefully RTMP sources, and everything here is Showflow. So uh, it's built to be more pro grade than StreamYard. What's your next question? Will we have preview? Oh my gosh, I mean, I'm a, uh, so the question was, will we have preview? Um, I mean, I'm a live video director, so there's no chance in any existence of this universe that we don't have a preview. It's by design. Um, we really wanted something that is really easy and quick to get going, and so we really tried to lean into this concept of auto layout. Again, auto layout being something like I could remove Johnny, I could remove uh, Sharif, um, and maybe just the three of us uh, here, Carly in the control room. Oh, I'm gonna remove the control room, bring back in Johnny. The three of us want to swing over to a media featured right. You can just click hold on to essentially the live cameras and then you could just go to the media featured right layout and we're, we're coming with you. So it's more about cleanness and quickness to a good look. But in terms of uh, where we're going with this, and I, I don't even think very far from now, uh, long from now, very much so a preview. Actually, if anything more, what's exciting is rundown integration. So our studio, we, are, we started as rundown software and so every single one of those cues in a virtual event are probably saying something like, 
go to panel layout uh, or to interview layout with Stevie and Carly and John. Um, and so if you've got the queue built and you've got a show caller who's staying standby ready for the interview, take the interview. We should uh, absolutely let you map this layout to that queue in the rundown. And when the show caller advances to that row, trigger that change automatically in live. And so very much so that's what we're doing. Whatever look you get here, you can save it as a custom scene if you're familiar with things like OBS and then map that scene to the run of show. So pretty cool stuff. We're gonna go just for another two or three minutes. And then of course, um, the big call to action here is, is what, where we can go with this next. But JP, one more question. Um, the other, there's a lot of questions regarding how one would rearrange the tile yep. and how our auto layouts work. And That's good. That. Yeah, so same spirit of the last uh, question. We are today demonstrating how easy it is to get to a really great look with just auto layout. Um, that being said, um, if you want to get the exact look that you want, um, that's going to be coming in probably a more of an October type release version of what we're working on here, where we're actually going to let you get in here and control your crop and your X and your Y and your Z positions, save that look exactly the way you want, and then get to that layout as you want it to be. So again, in this scenario, I can maybe bring Sharif in, things like that, but how do I kind of really make sure that I get the exact person in the right tile arrangement? That would come uh, in, a, in when we when we introduce the saving of the layout that you see, which we're already uh, uh, prototyping and it's going really well. So we'll have that very very soon uh, available at Studio. Another question, JP. One more. Well, a uh, similar question, but in regards to presenter view, and will it be possible to move the script closer to the center and the top so that it's closer to the camera? That is a great question, and I love that one. So um, just to bring that up, basically, if I can find that presenter view, there it is. Um, so in presenter view, um, this is really uh, just our, our implementation of it so far. What it's actually going to be is those all of those widgets, and you can you can if you go to showflow.tv forward slash studio, um, I can actually demonstrate that real quick here in our presenter view. But that's where you're going to see really the rundown and the presenter notes and the chat and the runtime clock. All of these things already work. We've got all of these functioning. We just haven't weren't able to get them up for today's demonstration. But what's exciting is that basically this entire layout will be something that is modular and so that you can rearrange that. Um, we're probably going to have three or four different layouts that maybe put the prompter at the top so that you can really uh, ask the presenter to read the prompter really word for word and it's as close as they possibly can to the camera. Um, and then of course adjusting all these layouts as we go. So yeah, really excited about presenter view. It's got a lot more to go in terms of um, what's going to be in here along with the way. Well, um, what I'm going to do is um, actually, uh, there's a bunch of questions. Uh, unfortunately, there's not enough time, but we're going to keep doing this. This is a new era for Showflow, this studio era of Showflow, and we're, uh, we're just thrilled. Um, and I cannot wait to actually be in here and to um, be doing it. We're actually doing about 10 demonstrations of this a day right now, where we are just showing people how it works. Um, and so there's a lot of enthusiasm out there and a lot of excitement around it. If you haven't already, definitely schedule a demo. It's with me. We're getting feedback. We're literally building this thing for our customers and for our marketplace. So to whatever extent there's something that you saw today or didn't see today, I want to hear it. Uh, to whatever extent there's confusion around how this thing matches up with another uh, platform that you're using, I want to hear it because this is very much so something that we want to be very very, very helpful for teams that are producing live events. Um, so that's one thing you can do is go schedule a demo with me and with our sales team and we will walk you through and learn more about your use case and talk more about the specifics. Um, the timeline of where we're at, everything you saw today, this is not vaporware. This is the thing. This is the real deal. You can use this on a live event. Um, so what uh, we're basically making available here at the end of the week and at the end of the month is we're going to make this available for early access and for people who want to either come in here uh, for free and actually run a lightweight event through it or just use it for internal stress testing and just kind of vet it out yourself. So that's going to be coming. Everyone who's on this webinar today will be getting a follow-up email that's specifically saying, hey, thanks for joining the webinar click this button, come, register for early access uh, and to, our, to, to get it. And that should be coming here in shortly at the end of the month. From there, the month of October is that month where we're really going to be continuing to put that bits of functionality in there into the presenter view, 
other bits of functionality like custom scenes in here and really preparing this thing uh, and button up those last things so that you can be using it. But again, we're focused on stability and so we will, you know, if you want to, we're, we're ideally, we want you to be comfortable to run live events through it in the month of October. And then as we come towards the end, that's when we're really gonna start making this thing more available market-wide. Um, so anyways, it's a good opportunity for free. Get in here, we need the feedback we want. We want the feedback. So that'll be coming to you and that's our big call to action for you guys here today. Um, with that, I wanna just again, thank my panel. I appreciate it guys, very much so. I also want to uh, thank Mr. JP Chat, this guy right here, very helpful. Even though uh, everything was done inside of Studio today, we did have a couple of uh, hardware things, not because you couldn't do it inside of Showflow Studio, but because um, we actually uh, had a unique use case today where we actually had to share Studio, like screen share Studio, um, and so for anyone who's familiar with that world, you would have ended up getting a never-ending feedback of uh, Showflow Studio in Showflow Studio. So we did a little hack here where we actually took the output and uh, brought it, brought it, uh, brought the monitor output in. So that's what a lot of this hardware is here today. Either way, that's what we were focusing on. Um, we really appreciate it. Um, you'll be getting a video recording of this. If this intrigued you, show it to your friends, bring other stakeholders involved, get on a scheduled demo with us. Let's talk about more specific your use case. And please, please stress test this, invite it in, use it on some lightweight events. We really, really, really want to learn and for this to be something that is really game changing for our industry. We are proud. We have an amazing team that loves you guys and loves this industry. Um, so we've been working hard in this world for like seven years on rundown software. We've been doing prompter software and now we've got studio. So I'm excited to bring that to you. With that, I want to just say thank you very much. I appreciate you and everybody have a wonderful rest of your day. And we are going to just go to a good old video loop here at the very end. Okay, cool. Take it easy, guys. Bye.